Good afternoon or good morning, depending on where you are connecting from. Thank you for attending uh, this uh, session. I'm uh, going to talk to you uh, today about the radio xenon measurement as part of the CTBTO verification regime. The radio, radionuclide component of the IMS network is composed of 80 stations, out of which 40 are being equipped with noble gas monitoring technology. 16 laboratories are supporting the network. The global monitoring of atmospheric xeno radioactivity as described here is a complex system. It is a unique network second to no one. Currently, 26 noble gas systems are certified. With this number, the IDC is analyzing 50 noble gas samples per day. Let me uh, touch on the new generation measurement systems. The new generation noble gas measurement systems have been created by four different developers. SONATRI, the acceptance was done in 2020, and uh, the sampling time is six hours. SPALAX NG, acceptance was done in 2021 with uh, a sampling, sampling time of uh, eight hours. Xeno International, acceptance in 2022, and the sampling time is six hours. Mix is still under acceptance testing, and the sampling time is 12 hours. The rollout into the IMS network has started, and the current generation has a time resolution of 12 or 24 hours per sample, but the new generation, as you saw it, enhance this to six, eight, or 12 hours, depending on the system. This result in a more than two-fold increase in the number of daily samples to be processed. Uh, data processing uh, and analysis in the IDC uh, the new generation noble gas system enhanced the time, as I just say it, from 12 or 24 hours to 6, 8, or 12 hours. This result in more than two-fold increase in the number of daily sample, samples to be processed. The IDC software has been completely redesigned and is now able to process spectra from all new systems. This applies to the automatic processing with Autostrada and interactive review with Inspy. Until entry into force, analysts review spectra eight hours per day, five days a week. This slide describes the noble gas categorization three-level scheme based on the observed concentration, levels A, B, and C. So A, of course, no presence of xenon. B, uh, we have a detection of xenon within the typical range of the station. And level C is anomalous xenon detection. This screening is applied to reduce the huge amount of samples by highlighting those that are outstanding with anomalous concentrations. As uh, mentioned before, we have currently 50 samples per day, and this will increase with 40 sites and the new generation of noble gas systems to about 120 samples per, per day. Let's see on the next slide how effective this uh, categorization scheme is. The pie chart on the left shows the distribution of three spectra categorization levels. The right 
histogram chart shows the breakdown by station and the plots are based on more than 140,000 spectra measured in the past decade uh, from September 2012 to May 2023. The pie chart on the left shows the dis distribution of the three categorization levels. The right histogram, we have the breakdown by, by station and 42% of them did contain radioxenon as shown in yellow and red. So uh, red color indicates the C, the level C samples. Only 3.5% of all samples were highlighted as having anomalous con concentrations. This boils down the vast number of samples to less than 5,000 that contain radioxenon in the concentration not typical for the station site. It should be noted that uh, nuclear explosion signals are not limited to anomalous concentration. They may just as well be recorded as level B sample. With so many radioxenon observations, special care need to be taken not to miss a potential signal from a nuclear explosion. The treaty requires the IDC to screen out events considered to be consistent with natural phenomena or with man-made phenomena that are not nuclear tests. All radioxenon is man-made, but how can we be certain that the observed concentration is not from a nuclear explosion? We need to know the sources, at least we need to know where they are. Uh, but to be effective, we need to have sufficient information about the quantity and time pattern of the releases. The PTS has established a comprehensive map and emission inventory of known source of radioxenon like medical isotopes, fac production facilities, nuclear power plants, and others but there are still unknown source. sources, changes from time to time and releases that are strongly variable. Uh, I'm now going to show you an animation, please. That was created from the Omni, for the Omni Globe to be shown at this conference for the first time. It uh, visualizes how the radio, radio xenon emission from selected nuclear facilities in the northern hemisphere quickly mix with each other. This mix creates the atmospheric background before reaching IMS stations. Therefore, any release from an unknown source like nuclear test may be difficult to identify. 14 days of plume dispersion is shown in this uh, animation. And different plume colors are used to visualize uh, the effect of mixing. However, there is no physical difference of xenon 133 from different sources. So about the methods of event discrimination, uh, the objective of uh, event screening is to discriminate between nuclear and non-nuclear test observation. And uh, we have uh, a list here of uh, methods for event screening. As mentioned before, concentrations, anomalies are highlighted by even categorization, level C. Further, we have the concentration distribution scatter plots implemented in all noble gas reports. Scatter plots may reveal further anomalies. Two isotopes even screening flags and the four isotope plot have also recently been added to all noble gas products. 
Even timing can be done using the activity, ra activity ratios. We developed a method for building events through association, multiple sample to uh, the same release event. Proper screening requires a quantitative separation of signals of interest from the background. On an event of in interest is identified, its source needs to be located on the map. Atmospheric transport modeling, in short ATM, is crucial for source location. The PTS has implemented two ATM capabilities, a global model, FlexPart, high split as back backup, and high resolution model, FlexPart slash Flex, uh, flex uh, part wharf. International ATM com intercomparison exercise have uh, repeatedly proven the operational IDC software of being the high of the highest quality. High resolution atmospheric transport is shown with DPRK 2013 as case study of bringing the maximum point to closer uh, the maximum point closer to the source uh, despite all the challenges mentioned noble gas mo monitoring has demonstrated to be highly effective the nuclear test uh, announced by the dprk ser served as a quick e quality check Xenon 133 from the test in 2006 was discovered at Yellowknife, Canada. ATM was used for fusing the waveform and radionuclear observations to confirm the nuclear nature of the event. The test in 2013 was more challenging because the radio xenon release was delayed about 50 days. The detections at Takazaki and Usurisk were confirmed to originate from the event by the simulation of isotopic ratios as a function of time. Other, other DPRK tests may also have been detected as IMS stations, and some scientific studies have been given evidence of this. In 2013, the successful association of noble gas observations was made at the PTS with ad hoc methods. After several successful expert meetings on this topic, the PTS has embarked on implementing in operational software the methods for expert technical analysis to assist a requesting state in, in characterizing an event. A lot of work lies ahead of us to develop and implement methods and procedures for expert technical analysis. Of course, this work is already in progress. On this slide, you can see a few examples of what IDC experts are uh, presenting to this uh, conference. We are happy to be in cooperation with the international expert community and having a leading role in advancing the cutting edge monitoring science. I'm not going to read out all information provided on this slide, but I will invite you to look at the 31 e-poster with IDC lead authors in the domain of noble gas monitoring. Regarding the availability of uh, data for scientific purpose, it is clear that uh, the work needs to be shared and co coordinated. Authorized users have access to the IMS data and those from background measurement campaigns. If you are not nominated, by your state as authorized user, you can get access to this data through the Virtual Data Exploitation Center, known as VDEC. 
I encourage you to join in, uh, to join in and use the tremendous asset of more than 10 years of IMS noble gas data. In conclusion, the station network is unique and noble gas monitoring is a complex task. The big challenges are first to identify a signal of interest against the widespread and highly variable atmospheric background. Then to characterize the event to determine whether the source could possibly be an explosion. The IDC has embarked on implementing in uh, operational software the methods for expert technical analysis to assist requesting state in characterizing an event. Solutions to the remaining challenges of noble gas monitoring can only be achieved by strong cooperation and strategic planning of the international scientific and technological community. This is uh, what we want to discuss today at the panel on advances in noble gas monitoring and remaining challenges for detecting nuclear exposing, sh exposing sh signals. Thank you very much for your attention.